Hi, so I, uh, I only had uh, lunch time to uh, uh, prepare this, but I'll, I'll keep it short. I'm, I'm working together with a friend of mine on, on building a, a compact microcomputer from TTL Logic. So on the left you see Marcel, who uh, started this all in December of 2016, and I joined him. And um, we were inspired by computers from the 70s and 80s, like the Apple One computer, that you may recognize on the top left. And we, would, we wanted to recreate something like that. And we were also inspired by stuff like the PDP, PyDP8. Maybe some uh, of you have built it yourself. There was a Dutch guy who built a do-it-yourself kit to recreate the original PDP8 computer using a Raspberry Pi. But although that was an interesting kit where you had to solder some uh, LEDs onto a board, we would like to take, a, take it one step further and let you solder by a kit with parts and solder it to form a complete microcomputer built out of these kind of chips that were already available in the 70s and 80s. So we did cheat a little bit. So for instance, the power is, uh, is supplied by USB cable, which didn't exist in the 70s. But we tried to stay as close as we could to the uh, 1970s and 80s components. So this, this is all through the whole easy soldering stuff that you can build yourself. And the nice thing is that these um, uh, things are still available in the market today. So there's a lot of stuff to talk about, but let's just point out two uh, little things um, during the design, which has taken already, uh, it's not finished yet, but it uh, has taken since December last year. There were a lot of design decisions to be made, and most of the design decisions were made uh, uh, because of the way the hardware works. So everything was assembled on a breadboard, and we went from there to see what can we incorporate, how can we improve the hardware. So one of the interesting things I think is that um, in computers you have the uh, uh, you used to have the Harvard architecture where you have um, uh, a separate memory for instructions and a separate memory for the data, um, and this was abandoned in the early 40s by the people making the uh, ENIAC computer. And there was one guy, Mr. von Neumann, he wrote a paper about it, so it's now uh, bears his name, the von Neumann architecture, where you have one memory that stores both the instructions and the data. So this is what we're used to today. Our kit uses the Harvard architecture, so it has advantages and disadvantages. Uh, it makes for uh, a simpler design, it makes it a lot faster, it's easier, um, but of course, it also has disadvantages. For example, if you want to put stuff into the data memory, you need to write a lot of code that copies all kinds of bytes into data memory. So that's a bit of a hassle. And in fact, when you look at the whole design of the computer, we have made some design decisions where we um, made a decision in favor of easy hardware. So we have quite easy hardware that's simple and fast. And the problems that it that they will give you need to be solved in software. But software these days is, is much more easy than it was in the Apple One days. Another th thing that's interesting, and uh, my friend Marcel wrote about it on Hackaday uh, just this week, um, is that we use uh, pipelining. Uh, each instruction in our computer is one byte, and each um, byte has one byte of data. So you have two bytes. One byte is the instruction and one byte is the data. Even if the instruction does not need data, there's always a byte for instruction and a byte for data. And we don't have microcode. So if you look at uh, processors like the 6502 that you will find in the Commodore, if you send it an, an hardware instruction inside of the CPU, there will be several steps, maybe seven steps that need to be taken to to perform that action, to perform that, uh, that opcode. In our computer, everything is done in one cycle. So that's really, really fast, but it limits uh, the amount of opcodes that we have. But again, that's something that we can solve in software. What's also interesting is that we have one um, clock, and the clock is delayed. So we have actually two clocks, one, one clock and one delayed clock. In one clock cycle, we can um, work on the opcode and the data that's been clocked in, and then already the next instruction can be fetched. So we, from the memory, we take an instruction and data. It's being pushed into registers. And while that, that is executing already, we take the next instruction from memory. And this makes for a really uh, sleek design. Um, you know that everything is, is one clock cycle. But again, the software becomes a little bit more difficult. And to show you how, let's go over that side for a moment. So for example, when you have a branch instruction, something really weird happens. Because if you do the branch, 
then during the execution of that ins instruction, the next instruction is already fetched from memory and put into the, to the system. So to, uh, in the top, there's a, a bit of program that says uh, load uh, zero in the accumulator and some uh, a little bit further along the lines, it says branch to address zero. But if you do the branch, so that's taken from memory, put into the register, and while the branch is executing, we are already fetching the next instruction, which is in this case the, the no operation. And that is also executed in the next step. So this is really completely weird. You do the branch, but the instruction next to the branch uh, is also executed. But we can use this. We can say uh, we can change this and, and say we branch to position one instead of position two, and we and instead of using a knob, we we duplicate the instruction on address zero, which then gets executed. So it's really ugly, but it's really fast, and this can be optimized in software. So we started out by making all kinds of stuff on breadboards and using oscilloscopes. And uh, we plan on doing a full talk about this at the uh, CCC3 conference, or the CCC conference. Uh, might you be interested in knowing more about this uh, project? Uh, the URL uh, uh, below you can use to subscribe to our announce uh, mailing list. So I guess that's all the time I have. Thanks. <laughs>